Hello, this Mass comes to you from St. Margaret's Church in Thornbury in Bradford uh, and is for Sunday the 14th of June. So wherever and whenever you're watching, it's very good to have you with us. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace be always with you. When Christians come together, it is customary for us to confess our sins before we approach God. And so in a few moments of quiet, I invite you to acknowledge uh, those things that you may have done uh, wrong in the last few days, uh, or those good things that you somehow never got round to doing, uh, and then together we will seek God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, we haven't quite mastered the art of two people speaking uh, in, in one video recording, so if you want to listen to the readings for today, uh, you'll just need to press pause uh, and then visit uh, another link in which you can hear my colleague, Father Robert, reading the Gospel. Uh, but I'm going to continue with uh, a reflection on, on the events of our time, uh, taking into account uh, that Gospel reading. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now on Pentecost Sunday, which is the 31st of March, Bishop Toby, the Bishop of Bradford, preached and reached uh, 109 people at St Margaret's Church. A few days earlier, on the 27th of May, a prayer suggestion reached 82 people. On the 14th of May, a midweek sermon reached 49 people. Now these, of course, are not people in our church buildings, but people on Facebook. And I want to reflect upon the significance of that. In the last three months, Father Robert and I have attempted to keep in touch with most members of the congregation in various ways. The simplest and most obvious way has been to make sure that the bits of paper that would normally have been taken away from church on Sunday morning are delivered to people's houses. That means that the weekly bulletin and the Sunday readings with a sermon thrown in for good measure. And as it happens, Father Robert and I do tend to write out our sermons in full. And we've sent this every week to 64 people, 22 from St. Margaret's Church and 42 from St. James's. And of those 64, 31 have received them by email, 24 by hand delivery and 9 by royal mail. But that's not enough. The ministry of the clergy in the Church of England is not limited to the faithful members of the congregation. People will often describe me as being the vicar of St. James's or the vicar of St. Margaret's. Sometimes even clergy will describe themselves in such a way. 
And my answer can only be a great big no. I'm the vicar of Thornbury and Woodall and Waterloo. Vicars are never vicar of a church or a congregation. They are vicars of a whole community. That's because the church is there for the whole community. And this is expressed in two ways in today's readings. The first is in the reading from Exodus, taken from a rather grim time when the Israelites were wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, halfway between slavery in Egypt and building a new nation in the Promised Land. But the time in the wilderness was not wasted. It was a time of formation, a time for learning who they were, a time for discerning their vocation. You'll find all this in Exodus chapter 19. And there we read that their vocation was to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. That sounds a little bit like religious jargon. And it needs unpacking. So to be a priest is to act as a kind of a go-between. The role of a priest is to keep the lines of communication open between God and his people. And the individual priest in the Old Testament times did this by offering sacrifice. But it's the people of Israel as a whole who are called to be a priestly people. Moses is telling the people of Israel that their communal role is to bring all the nations to the Lord and to bring the Lord to all nations. They being given love and blessed with the knowledge of God. Their responsibility is to share that with the rest of the world. And that idea that appears very strongly in the book of Exodus appears too in the gospel. For example, in Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus sends his disciples out to proclaim the good news. In some ways, it's more explicit than the book of Moses. Jesus sends his disciples out to proclaim the good news, heal the sick, and to cast out demons. At this stage, he sends them out only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Two or three years later at the Ascension, he sends them out to the whole world. So keeping in touch with regular members of any congregation is not enough. Three months ago, when we were able to meet in church buildings every Sunday, our doors were open, and members from the whole community were able to join us. And from time to time they did. And that's why Lynn Johnson in our congregation, Father Robert and I, post on Facebook. Not for the 64 regular members of the congregation, but for the 15,000 others. And since Facebook knows no geographical boundaries, perhaps another 6 billion others as well. And the evidence seems to be that to some extent it works. The words, and more particularly the videos that we post on Facebook, reach far more people than anything that ever takes place in our church buildings. Now, of course, we know very little about the quality of that engagement. Of the 109 people reached by Bishop Toby's sermon, it's quite possible that 108 watch for only a few seconds. But the point is, it's there. It's there for a long time. And anybody can watch it. It would be easy to regard the current lockdown as an entirely negative experience that must be endured with gritted teeth and escaped as soon as possible. I think St. Paul would have been horrified at such an attitude. He wrote this to the church in Rome. We boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. 
And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So perhaps Paul's message for us is that we are called to transform the negative experience of lockdown into something much more positive. The Bishop of Leeds, Bishop Nick, has suggested a way that we might do this, transforming the negative into the positive. He suggested we might ask ourselves four questions. These are questions for all the congregations in the Diocese of Leeds, but in a sense, for any human being in our own time. The first question is, what have we lost in the last few months that must remain lost? The second question is, what has been lost in the last few months that we must regain in the weeks and months ahead? The third question is, what has been gained in the last few months but now must be retained or developed? And the fourth question, what has been gained that was fine for the time but can now be lost? You will have gathered from what I've said so far that engaging in social media is something I think we've gained and must keep. But there's a sound principle that says if we start doing something new, we must drop something old. It's so easy to work on the assumption that we simply have to get back to normal. The more creative approach would be to examine what was normal three months ago and ask if we really do want to go on doing it. Is this the ideal opportunity to stop doing it, to let go? I'd ask you to consider these questions and you'll find them on the Facebook page in the written version of this reflection. Consider them yourselves. Talk about them with your friends. And let me know what you think. You could even post some answers on our Facebook page. St Margaret Thornbury or St James Woodall and Waterloo. I have spoken in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have placed before me some bread and some wine, some very ordinary bread and wine. But before we celebrate the rest of the Mass, I would invite you to reflect on the needs of the world. And in a few moments of quiet, call to mind any particular needs that you're aware of or individuals or situations and bring them to this altar. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, food to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, 
that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread he gave you thanks. He broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour on us your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your salvation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Margaret of Antioch, James the Great, and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to say with me the words of the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Christian church has always taught that when it is impossible for us physically to receive the body and blood of Christ, yet we're able to make a spiritual communion with him. And so I would invite you in a few moments of quiet, simply to be aware of the presence of Christ with you now, wherever you may be, in the people with whom you share this moment and this space. Let us pray. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for looking in. Uh, if you live in Thornbury or Woodall and Wood, Wood, Waterloo, uh, you may like to know that our churches will be open for an hour a week and you can find details of that on our Facebook page. Again, if you want to get in touch through our Facebook page, uh, please do. And um, I, I aim to post something uh, several times a week. So do feel free to keep in touch. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.